Hey, I'm talking to you. Did you know you were created for great things? Did you know that? Regardless of what things look like right now, God has big plans for your life. If you don't believe me, let's listen to the story of Gideon. The Midianites had hurt the Israelites for many years. They stole their crops and their animals. The Israelites were so frightened that they hid in caves in the hills away from their homes. God chose a man named Gideon to help the Israelites fight the Midianites. Gideon was not a soldier. Gideon was a farmer. How could a farmer lead an army? He knew that he could not defeat the Midianites all by himself. Even though Gideon did not seem strong, the Lord chose him to lead Israel. Gideon knew that he must obey God. If God wanted Gideon to fight, then the Lord would help him defeat the Midianites. Gideon gathered 30,000 men together. That was a big army. The problem was that the Midianites had an even bigger army with 132,000 men. Maybe if they fought really hard and used lots of tricks, the Israelites could beat the Midianites. But God had another idea. God did not think that Gideon's army was too small. God told Gideon that his army was too big. God told Gideon to let all of the men who were afraid to go home. Gideon told the men what the Lord had said. 20,000 men went home. Now there were only 10,000 men left in the army. 10,000 men to fight 132,000 men. God spoke to Gideon again. And guess what God said about Gideon's army? It was still too big. God wanted Gideon and all of Israel and all of the Midians to know that when God is on your side, it doesn't matter how big the enemy is. The side that God wants to win will always win. The Lord told Gideon to take the 10,000 men down to the water to drink. Gideon was to watch the men take a drink from the water. If a man knelt to the water and put his mouth to the water and lapped it like a dog, then he was told to go home. If a man knelt but scooped water into his hand and then up to his mouth to drink, he could stay in Gideon's army. Only 300 men scooped water up to their mouths. That meant that Gideon's army now had only 300 men. 300 to fight against 132,000 Midianites. Gideon and his men knew that only God could help them win this battle. That night, Gideon and his men went down to spy on the Midianite camp. Gideon heard some of the Midianite soldiers talking. The Midianite soldiers were frightened. They had been having dreams about the Israelite soldiers defeating them. Gideon divided his men into three groups of 100. He gave each man a clay jar with a torch inside. He told them to circle all around the outside of the Midianite camp and wait until they heard him blow his trumpet. When Gideon blew his trumpet, he and all of the rest of the soldiers started blowing their trumpets. Then they crushed their clay jar so that it looked like a circle of fire around the camp. They all yelled, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. All of this must have been terrifying for the Midianites. The Lord made them get all confused and so they took out their swords and started fighting but they were not fighting Gideon's army. They were fighting each other. They got so confused that they all started running away. Gideon's army of 300 beat the Midianite army of 132,000. Only God can make that happen. Isn't that amazing? 
God was able to defeat a whole army with just 300 soldiers. That is a life principle for us to remember. It's not about how many we have, but it's all about who we serve. It's not about how many we have, it's about who we serve. And we serve God, the only living God who cares about you, who made you special, who gave you gifts, talents, abilities to do great and mighty things. And all we have to do is obey and follow him. That's the only way to get the best out of life. He's already created you to do great and mighty things, but the only way you're going to do it is if we follow him. So that's our chant. You know we're ready for it. I'm going to say, you know, if you want the best, you're going to say, follow God. Do you hear me? I'm going to say, if you want the best, you say, follow God. And that's what we have to do. Let's try it. If you want the best, if you want the best, and that is 100% right. If you want the best in life, if you want the best in school, follow God. Do what's pleasing to God. Do what will make God happy, and you will have the best of life. Okay, mighty warriors. See you next time. Bye.